20, 2020 at 9.30 in the small hall. Please turn off all devices. Thank you. Please stand. <laughs> Heavenly Father, please provide your guidance as the Board of Trustees take deliberation on issues related <coughs> to matters of the park and help them reach a just and appropriate resolution to those issues. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now take residents' comments and questions. Roll call. Oh, roll call. I'm sorry. I apologize. Roll call for his name. can come up. Mary Chandler. Here. Lori Dalton. Here. Gordon Elton. Here. Pete Price. Here. Sandy Semenich. Here. Mike Sansoni. Here. Dwayne Trotter. Here. We have a forum. We will now take residents' comments and questions. Good morning. My name is Dottie Deer Wester, and I live at 1804 Ohio Avenue. And I'm here to um, speak on two issues. Um, on the agenda for the workshop and for the trustees meeting, the community channel policy is there twice. I don't know if it's going to be discussed during the workshop. Can that be answered now? Because that makes a difference on the comments. Okay. The format does not allow for that. Okay, well it's in there twice. So my understanding is that when decisions are to come to the trustees, when items are to come to the trustees for decisions that they're presented at the workshop before, and I know that this topic had been presented at least once before. My question is, why is this policy being proposed? Is something broken? What is it supposed to fix? It seems to be adding another layer to getting slides on channel 732. There is a process in place now. Please include answers to these questions during your discussion. The computer club reformed from the former video computer club in December of 2018 as a result of the trustees changing the management structure of channel 732. Members of the computer club are talented and willing to volunteer to assist the trustees and channel 72 with the operations of channel 732. I encourage trustees to tap into the volunteer talent available to you within this park regarding channel 732. I also encourage the trustees to embrace technology. I recommend there are three options to preparing and submitting notices to channel 732. One is the handwritten notices, which is done now. Second is a fill-in form that can be prepared on the computer and either submitted via email or dropped off to the proper person. And third is to allow those with the skills to develop the PowerPoint slides to prepare those slides in that format and to submit via email. This type of submission saves work as it does not require someone else to develop the slide. It is prepared already for him or her and ready for a review. The second item is a media committee change. It's also on the trustee agenda and on the workshop with a slightly different title. Will it be discussed during the workshop? Um, thank you very much. Uh, Jermaine Drain, 1614 Minnesota Avenue. Uh, I propose that the board do what should have been done uh, as soon as the tenant's property had been purchased years ago. I propose that the board gather names of, of interested residents who will submit in writing why they wish to be on a future planning committee. And from that list, the board select at least nine residents. That the first duty for the future planning committee will be to collect, organize, and formulate a plan for the development of the tenant's property. The meetings will be posted, open to the public, minutes recorded, and reported to the board. I can't help but think, but wonder, if an open process like this had been done to gather all the data in the last few years, that maybe we'd be in, we'd be in a better place for the board uh, to make decisions on the use of this property. Thank you.
My name is Karen Harker. My address is 6907 West Bayou Lane. I'm a member of the Computer Club of Carroll Estates. It came to my attention in October that our members and other residents cannot connect to the Wi-Fi hotspots in the park. I suspected this was a software issue. Um, I reported the problem when I had a representative from Spectrum tell me that uh, using Wi-Fi hotspots is not included in our contract. And I want to thank Mary Chandler for looking into that. And I was hoping you might be able to give us a time frame of when they'll resolve this issue. Also, too, um, I used to be a member of the uh, Video Computer Club till it was disbanded. So I wanted to call, I wanted to find out, too, about this Trailer Estates Parks and Recreation District Community Channel Policy PP14A. I don't understand the reason for this proposal. Um, I used to help all the time in the TV station. In the first two years I was a resident here. Um, there is no video club, so I just wanted to let the board know that got disbanded when I was ostracized from the TV room back in 2018. So I want to know what the reason for this policy is. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rod Green. I live at 1613 New York Avenue. And I'm here today for the Trailer Estates Horseshoe Club. Um, what we're uh, looking for is some money to fix up the pits and that. And I've got some sheets here that I would like to give to you. Uh, front and the back of this, um, just so we can follow along. And uh, the Trailer Estate uh, Horseshoe Club, we maintain the pits, we buy supplies on an ongoing basis, uh, we purchase additional shoes if they need to be replaced that cost us $60 to $80 a pair. And uh, we have designed and put up new and attractive signs identifying the area. Uh, we designed and built new scoreboards for each of the pits. We do enjoy it doing these items for the benefit of our community. However, recently we have encountered a situation with the iron stake uh, that we shoot at. They become loose after time, which creates a problem playing and even a potential safety hazard. The stakes move on impact and can launch and pitch a shoe several feet in some directions. We have tried several different techniques to repair or correct the situation at our expense. Uh, unfortunately, Unfortunately, these economical methods have failed to give us a permanent fix. We have done a good deal of research looking for a safe and permanent solution to the problem. Based on that research, we would like to propose the following long-term solution for keeping the state secure. Uh, we will be using 6x6 six six treated lumber with a 3 8 metal plate secured to the lumber with four 3 8 leg bolts as pictured above. The plate and the lumber will have a one inch maximum diameter hole to receive the stake. The metal plate should stop the lumber from breaking out. The costs associated with correcting all 14 pits are as follows. Uh, the plates cut and pre-drilled per specs are $20 each for a cost of $280. The one inch by 36 inch long cold rolled metal stakes are $50 a pair times three we only need six of those instead of the 14. Uh, the six by six uh, by eight foot treated lumber are $18.58. We need four of those for a total of $74.32. And the leg bolts, uh, three eighths inch by four inches long, are $42 for 50 of them for a cost of $84. The total cost comes to $588.32. Uh, we would appreciate it if the board would consider funding this long-term 
uh, repair. We will provide all the labor to accomplish the above repairs. Uh, your consideration in helping out in this manner is greatly appreciated. Uh, I, may be reached, I may be reached by email at the following address listed, listed here. Uh, your time is up, so thank you. We did, we did read it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. My name is Peg Jansen, and I'm Richard. My Richard's uh, husband, and I are third-generation residents at 2013 Minnesota Avenue. I'm here today to remind all the TE residents of the next day of the activity fair, which will be Saturday, February 1st, 2020. It's coming fast. It's a great opportunity for TE residents to see the wonderful variety of activities available right here in Trailer Estates, all in one room, the large hall. The activities include art, cards, exercise, sports, dance, showtimes, dinners, religious, socialization, educational, and others. So come to the fair and meet each of the activity representatives. Find out what it takes to be a part of the activity. Again, Saturday, February 1st, 2020, in the large hall, 9 a.m. to noon. So get out of your chair and come to the fair. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Any other comments or questions? Uh, Pierre Gnadi Schaefer, 2207, Illinois. Um, I know that recently we've seen some things on Facebook in regards to the 10 property and the presentations of what uh, I think the board is looking for. I was just wondering if there was any kind of um, perhaps in formal announcements of there is a criteria set for what you're looking for for those plans, the what the format is going to be presented in, and also what happens after the pre after people's ideas are shared or presented. So it's more of a process question and I guess one of clarity as to what is supposed to transpire at that event. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Any other comments? The uh, Wi-Fi with Spectrum, I did get um, a response back from my business contact at Spectrum. Um, I'm going to be providing him with a picture of the serial number on the boxes and he's going to check and make sure that there's no issues with the boxes or what's going on because I, in our contract we have two complementary internet modems and there's been no change to the contract uh, regarding um, residents' ability to connect to the internet at those two hot spots. So uh, why we were told that that's not in our bulk contract is a mystery to me and it was to him. But um, I'm going to get those that information back to him today and we'll see where it goes, but I'm hoping we'll get resolution fairly quickly. But I'll be checking with him on a regular basis. Um, the estimate for the horseshoe kits, I will bring that forward um, and add it to the workshop today so we can talk about whether or not we want to fund that. So we'll try to get that moved forward. Oh, yeah. well, we'll do it. Um, let's see. That's it for me. Gordon? No comments. For me? Yeah, just for the horseshoe pits, I'd like to discuss that because I think I can take that up and do this, but I can okay. see how we can put that out. So we'll save that for workshop? Yeah. Um, Lori? Um, are you going to address the TP4 or TMA? I, I do have one more thing. I mean, I I took the minutes of the last board meeting because Lori was ill, and 
Yeah, I don't want that job. Um, so I think there was some confusion about where the status of a lot of the items that were discussed at the workshop. So there is a duplication. Um, it's my understanding that those items need to be discussed again in a workshop because there were enough issues that we needed to resolve that they weren't ready to be voted on. So it's a duplication. They should not be on the trustee meeting agenda. So I apologize. I think that was part of the, the multiple hands in the process when I was trying to fill in. So cor Correction. They do need to stay on the... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. That's my okay, understanding. under because we discussed it at a meeting of the board at the last one, and we tabled the action. We had to bring it back up under old business on this workshop or this meeting, and we're going to table it again so we can discuss it in more detail in okay. the workshop. Okay, that's why there's duplication. We had to bring it back under parliamentary procedure to present it once and then table it and then move on move to the workshop where you can discuss it and go from there. That's where we are on that one. Um, we've discussed that one. As to relation to the 10 property, uh, there will be an announcement put on 732 starting tomorrow. Uh, we are asking people that have interest in giving us a proposal that they present to the board at its workshop on February 3rd. And the reason we ask for that is so we have a rough idea of what will be discussed. Uh, since I've got to share that meeting, I would like the board to be aware of what's going to be happening. And we would like as much detail as possible from people um, as it relates to the 10 property. I want to clarify once again, we have not, as a board, taken any action as it relates to the 10 properties. We are as about as confused as the residents of the park is as to what should take place. Uh, there is no consensus of the board that I'm aware of as it relates to the 10 property at this time. <clears throat> we are seeking input. What we'll do after we get the input, I don't know. We may not do anything. Uh, again, we have to fill out the the residents and the way they feel about the 10 property and my personal feedback from getting from people is they really don't want us to do anything. I may be wrong, but I get that impression that there isn't a will among the people themselves to come to a consensus. And to take it to a referendum uh, before we can get somewhat of a consensus makes no sense because it's doomed to failure. But we're willing, we want to listen, we want to get ideas, we want to, you know, get as much input as we can. Uh, the idea of a committee won't work because of the sunshine laws in the state of Florida. Uh, you can't have a committee without a board member there. And if we have two board members there, then we definitely have to have a sunshine law uh, continuation. So the committee concept, although it's a nice one, uh, won't work on, from that basis and if we told you to go ahead with the committee and we could set up a committee, they'd have to be done uh, when? By April? Because most people go home by April, so you're going to be carrying it over till January of next year. Um, it just doesn't make some, some sense at this point. That's why we're willing to listen and hear from people as to what they think we should be doing with that property. Moving on. Yes. I, I, I'm sorry, I missed one thing. I need for everyone to understand that there is no board approved Facebook page. Trailer State's Facebook page is a is residents. It is not board approved. It's not information that's coming from the board directly. And I don't look at it, I don't police it, I don't but just need you to understand that that's not a board Facebook page. We do not have a Facebook page. Sorry, go ahead. Well, there's actually three of them out there. Well, it doesn't matter. None of them are very cool. Okay, moving on. We need a motion to approve the minutes of January 6th, 2019. Do I have a motion? How many motions? Sandy, do you have a second? Second. Go ahead. A question. Um, typographical errors. Do you want those identified now or? 
Sorry, <laughs> Mary. Yeah, yeah. Just told you this is my strength, but yeah. I mean, uh, yes. Do you make the correction? I will. I will take care of. Okay. Thank you. What are they? Okay. Well, on the bottom side. of page two, the last line says Sharon Price Medial Commission. There's an extra L. There. Oh. Yep. And on, on the last page, report from clubs and organizations. Gotti spells her name D O T T I E. <laughs> okay, and a question on the uh, uh, report of the expenses and income from the New Year's Eve dance. Should the minutes include the actual amount of revenue and expenses? Not necessary. It's included the reports provided to the office, and so it's part of the public record as an attachment. Okay. That's all I have. Any other, <coughs> any other corrections? Yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, on the first page, um, Debbie Deerwester statement, the, uh, let's see, the third line under her name starts with the word members. If you move over to the right, it says, and does it call under, and it should say fall under. Oh. Yeah. Which is not a biggie. And then the next statement is a, is a question. After, re after responding to um, uh, Gordon in the fashion that I did for the uh, New Year's Eve, in the past, uh, under the treasurer's report, we've never, um, since I've been secretary, we've never just said approved regular expenses. We've actually enumerated them. Um, and I know that you passed out an attachment. I didn't get that particular attachment. I know it's on record, but do you want them enumerated into the minutes? I, that, that's a question. That's a question for Mike. Yeah, it's incorporated. That I can do okay. Um, so I'll have to have a copy to verify that that, mm -hmm. that, that matches. Okay. Any any other corrections or additions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion to approve the trustees' workshop minutes of January 6, 2019. We have a motion to accept. Um, Mary, second by Pete. Hang on, hang on just a second. Mary wrote them. She can't. Okay. She can't. Pete. Pete, Pete will do the first, okay? Oh, can I do the second? No, I can't. Uh, public relations trustee, I'd like to ask Dwayne to fill in as needed, uh, well, since he's the most experienced at that while I'm gone. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> you do That's all I have. Lori? You're not going to do the I'm leaving for the Okay, that's fine. Um, all right. First off, I want to thank Mary for covering for me at the last meeting and doing the minutes. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, and then the other thing is, I've received and processed the trustee reservations for the May 1st, 2020 through April 30th, 2021. Therefore, I'm ready to accept reservations from residents and clubs and groups and organizations for this same time period. Please remember, for me to process recurring reservations, I will need to have your organizations, bylaws, officers, etc., or for less formal groups of PP39 submitted with your reservation, Otherwise, I can't process it. Um, since I've been ill, I am way behind with the work in the office. Normally, these reservations are turned around within about a week. That's not going to happen right now. Uh, please give me a couple of weeks to get the paperwork processed, and thanks for your understanding on that. May I say something? Else? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I received the email message uh, from Neighborhood Watch. This isn't necessarily a continued wreck. But there was some interest in it, and I think it arose from going back to some discussion I had about uh, the sheriff department coming to uh, uh, do a presentation at one of the coffee breaks, and I was looking at April. But we had mentioned before about the possibility of maybe coming to a board meeting, but we discussed at a board meeting and thought maybe it might be better if it would work out in uh, an evening sometime so we could coordinate it uh, with code enforcement and then have more people available. Uh, that hasn't developed yet, but I'm going to uh, still uh, try to reschedule the deputy to come in April and the other while well, we could uh, consider also. But 
the email message uh, concern, uh, expressed a concern that uh, the uh, participation in neighborhood, neighborhood Watch has really diminished and there's hardly anyone who will come out and participate in their activity of patrolling the park and so forth. And uh, this, this is something that goes back in the park to, I think, about 19, 1977, you know, early on in the, when the park was founded there and they were developing it. Uh, there was a, a, a form of a security watch that, that was formed at that time, and it seemed like now there's uh, the group or the people who sent the email message expressed a concern that no one has any interest in the safety or the issues of crime in the park. And uh, they were suggesting that maybe consider putting up some uh, video cameras throughout the park to help uh, monitor that since they don't have the exposure anymore of the people uh, driving throughout the park to keep an eye on things. So I just thought I'd bring that to the attention of the board. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, the board will be accepting letters of intent from 1 p.m. today, January 20th, until 3 p.m. Friday, February 14th, for the two vacant positions, one term ending December 2020, the other term ending December 2021, and they must be available for the February 17th meeting interviews. We will conduct interviews on that day. Uh, received an email from 1609 Wisconsin and 6921 Park Lane raising concerns about removal activity posters from bulletin boards down at the post office. Their solution is to place it, place it under lock and key. That becomes a problem in and of itself because after a while you're issuing so many keys you really don't know who has keys. Uh, I cannot not make adults who want to act like teenagers be adults. I mean, there's no way you can correct that. Uh, all you can do is, there's only two people that are allowed to remove things from the bulletin board. The secretary and her designation, designee, who happens to be me. Uh, and we only remove things uh, at the end of the month or activities that have ended. Nobody else should be removing anything from the bulletin board. I'd like to remind the board members that they should keep off Facebook. Not that I have a problem with Facebook. It's the issue of the sunshine law. If two or more trustees are on Facebook at the same time and end up discussing an issue that might come before the board for a vote, it could result in a violation of the Florida sunshine law and put them and the park in jeopardy. The sunshine law is very tricky. It says if you communicate with a person outside of me, in any format, in a, in a discussed issue that could come, is, could be an idea, could be a suggestion, that might come before the board, and the board members discuss it, they're violating the sunshine law. The same applies on Facebook. If two or more of them are on, you can look at it, you just can't participate. That's what I want to drive home, is it's the participation I'm concerned about. <coughs> Uh, the February 3rd board meeting will be a long one, or could be a long one. Uh, again, we're advertising on 732 as of today that any person who has an idea they wish to advance on TAN property can come before the board on the 3rd. The reason we want them to come before the board is we want to have an idea of what they're planning to present. We'd ask it to be as detailed as they can possibly make it. They may not be able to make it very detailed, that's fine. But we'd like to have a rough idea of what they're talking about. Um, you brought up the idea of reminding board members about the activity fair on um, the first Saturday of February. I would also suggest the neighborhood watch get a booth and start advertising. Uh, again, they can use 732 as a means of doing that. But that, that's my report. Dwayne, I understand you got a little bit of a list. Maybe I should post it. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, from the main book, well, this is from the uh, past north, but the marina update, uh, MAS, our company that's been doing all the well digging and all that down there, uh, the state required them under a new regulation to uh, dig two more wells. 
They were both 12 feet deep. They have two barrels sitting down there. The, they're not contaminated soil, but the test results came back clean. So for the next 60 days, they're going to be retesting the, uh, the new wells. And the other eight wells that are down there now, uh, all of them have came back just slightly over the you know, re minimum requirements for that. So knock on wood, maybe in the next 60 days we will be done with that project. Uh, we have reviewed the Beautification Committee's request for the uh, five foot uh, concrete around there. Uh, it's my recommendation to the board that we deny it. I'm going to put that in the 2021. I don't really consider it a beautification project, but uh, I'm sure that will be approved later on. Uh, we've been in the process of replacing the pool chairs, uh, the straps and stuff. Uh, nine of them out of the 42 are now out for uh, repair. It's about a four week turnaround for each number for the nine. So as they come back in, then the nine will go right back out and it's be repaired. Uh, there's a lot more to it. I didn't know they were sandblasting and repainting the entire chair. I thought it was just replace the straps and come back, but it's not. Uh, the sound system that was approved a couple meetings ago for the church is in, and uh, maintenance is going to be going in and starting the measurements for the cabinetry to rebuild the cabinets one. Once that's done, then the company will come back in and start uh, programming the whole system. Uh, it looks fabulous. I think it's going to be really easy to handle. Uh, an additional port potty was delivered down to the bocce court since they're not being heavily used. Uh, we have received three bids for the reasphalting of the uh, marina parking on the south side of the uh, marina. Uh, the low bid came in at all around improvements. Uh, the original bid came in at 10 3. Mark Y did some negotiations and brought it down to $9,995, which is under the $10,000 requirement. Uh, it's my recommendation that we approve that so I can get it uh, in the process of getting the work done. That should be about a $13,030 savings of what the budget was already. It was $23,025 for the budget. The four ADA doors. I wish uh, St. Lori was here. Uh, we received the bids for those. <clears throat> uh, the low bid for the three doors for the men's, women's, and the south uh, door for the large hall came in. Uh, there at six thousand bucks. The other door at the post office came in at thirty-one hundred dollars. And as soon as my recommendation, that we go ahead and make that so I can get the. Companies in here to start. 6,000 total, so 2,000 each? 6,000 and 3,100. Okay. Uh, and I need to include another $890. 890 bucks in there, so. So 99, 90. 9, 12. And we have 4, 5, 10, 99, 90. Yeah, we'll save it. So it's about $2,410 savings there. But as soon as I can get the approval from the board, I'll go ahead and get with Mark and we'll start the installation, get those installed. And that will be a dead issue finally. At the last meeting we discussed the thermostats and uh, in the large hall of people coming up and turning up the heat and turning it down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not done looking at that. The thermostats are up against the outside wall so if the outside wall is reading 72 and you turn down to 66 or vice versa, then it's fluctuating in the middle of the, uh, middle of the room. So Mark and I are working on a process on how we can get that resolved, but nothing's done yet. Um, we're in the process now of re getting prices in to replace the ceiling tile here in the uh, small hall. Uh, we've already received prices and stuff for the electricity. We have one today for the air ducts coming through to change that, and that will be one of my major submissions for the 2021 budget. And the 
last I met with the pool security people a Friday ago, uh, we had some pretty good discussions on what was really happening. Uh, I want to set up another meeting with the pool security. Uh, I have a couple of ideas. Uh, to see if we can't help that before the spring break problem gets here. That's it. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> um, with regards to this, too, he has to bring back the motions to the next meeting. Or is those already approved? Well, the, yeah, the, we've already approved the work when we set the budget, and we approved a dollar now, and he's coming in under that dollar now. So, so we need to vote on? I don't think we need to vote on it. It's already been voted and approved, and he's not over budget, so he's not asking for more money. So. Cool. Does that answer your question? Get it going, Mark. <laughs> On this pool security issue, yes. how many signs do we have up there uh, stating the Florida uh, regulations as it relates to the use of uh, water and all that other stuff? None. Maybe yeah. we should look into putting at least four of them. Uh, I'm already working on that. Uh, that's one of the issues we'll be working with the pool security on. Uh, one of the things I did do is I went out and purchased new hats because I didn't like black hats that said pool security, so it is now white hats that says pool monitor, sign has been changed. Um, just trying to make it more appeasable to the residents to come in that they're not being barked at, it's just going to be trade friendly. However, I do have a bunch of residents that do get rather rude. Uh, it's a rule. It's, some of them are state laws that we're going to have to abide by. Uh, please, just, just try and follow the rules that we've already got in place. And the replacement of the chairs, the reconditioning of the chairs in the pool, mm -hmm. how is that affecting people's attitudes towards being able to sit at the pool? The only thing I'm seeing right now is that we have enough uh, lounge chairs, but I'd like to get with Mark and see if I've got any budget to see if we can't get more tables with the umbrellas. We have more than enough lawn chairs, or lounge chairs, I should say. You think during the process of reconditioning? Yeah. Okay. Any, okay, moving on. Uh, beautification committee. <coughs> Good morning, Sandy Stevens from 1814 Minnesota Avenue, representing the Beautification Committee. Um, first on my list is Soul Sensation. We're sold out, and thank everybody for helping with this. And I hope you see you there, and it's going to be a wonderful show. And it's on Friday the 24th. Our meeting for the month of uh, January will be 1 p.m., Wednesday, the 22nd, in the small hall. And on the February 1st activity fair, and I don't know what I was going to And I want to thank Dwayne and Mark for going over all that stuff with the beach. And thank you for taking it over. And now we can take our money and put it into some other kind of beautification. Thank you, everybody. Moving on to old business, community channel policy. I'd like to table that until the next meeting. The motion to you're making the motion. I, I'm making a motion. Okay. Okay. I'll second it. Mary seconds it. Tabling is not discussable or debatable. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes. The next one is duty of the chairman. Again, uh, I'd like to table that until the next meeting. So I'll second. I'll second Mary that. seconds it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Next one is media committee change. I make the or I vote to table that until the next meeting. <coughs> Mary I'll seconds second it. That. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Application for keeping emotional support animals. Alright, I need to make my, my original motion on that one. I make a motion to up 
facilitate replication for keeping of emotional support service animals and an accommodation for residents with disability, PP40, to include the two questions and a place for the doctor to sign as discussed at the December 16, 2019 workshop. Do you have a second? I'll second. Discussion. All right, I need a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, for thank you. Mm -hmm. I uh, need to pass these out. Send two that way. And that way. Um, I I heard what was said at the at the last board meeting about the confusion, and so what I'm proposing is that we add this statement that I've circled here on the first page, and the statement says, along with the above mentioned letterhead prescription pad, the following must also be completed, so that they they understand we need both. So, it, does, does everybody kind of sort of think that fixes it? I think it does. Okay. okay. Sandy? Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Mary? Yes. Gordon? <clears throat> well, I'm not sure that it does because I just want to clarify what I'm understanding. Now, there's multiple pages here. Right. The first page like to is, the top top is the same as the second is. The front page of, of it, and the, set, the front, this first page is actually the second page. Okay, so the page two, the one on the front is the replacement page two? Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. The proposed replacement page two, yes. And then the, the whole part below it was what was originally proposed to be added. Correct. So we're still. Re, uh, requiring them to have a signature of a physician. Yep. Yes. And we also need a letter or some other document. Letter had a prescription pad. From, from one doctor. of these. Mm -hmm. The definition of a mental health care professional is defined is, by state and federal law. Okay, I haven't never seen anything that defines that. Well, my understanding based on the stuff the FHA has out, or Fair Housing Association as well, they allow for mental health care professionals and they define it. We don't. So with, the, with this change, I'd like to amend my motion to read to update the application for keeping of emotional support service animals as an accommodation for residents with disability, PP40, to include the two questions and, play, and a place for the doctor to sign as discussed at the December 16, 2019 workshop and add clarifying statement regarding repeated information. Is a second to accept that? I do. Duane second. Do you second it? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Question, would this, would this apply to the people that currently have <clears throat> this, uh, or is the existing authorization continued? I would, I would assume, and there's that rotten word, that this is an annual document. So if you turned in your doc, if you had this and you turned in your document last week, it's good for a year. And so you wouldn't see this new form until next year when you need to re-up your paperwork. Okay, so so it, it's a living document that starting whenever we approve it forward, this is the document that's going to be used, but all the, we're not going to go backwards and make them go. So every get annual new renewal. Every new annual renewal will we'll get the new form. Right. Is that a valid assumption, yeah, Mike? That's okay. an easy assumption, right? Yeah. Because they're required to provide us a copy of the, the, the dog or the animal shots. Right. So, so this, this is going to go in through the welcome pack of It's not in the welcome pack. No. No. no, there's a reference to it, and there's a reference to the rules, and a reference to where to find it, but we don't repeat the information over and over in the welcome pack, and we just point them to where they can get it. I, I wasn't clear that it was required an annual renewal other than just the shot record. We have been doing it on an annual basis as long as I've been signing off on them. <coughs> I 
was looking for where it says that. We might need to add that if it's not there. I would, I would add it at the top of the heading. I'm listening. I, I put it at the top of the heading. Trailer Estates Annual no. Annual Trailer Estate Park Integration Application for Keeping Emotional Support for these Animals as an accommodation for resident with disability. So we're just going to work, add the word annual in front of the word application. No. That would be the easiest. Anybody have a problem with that? For residents with disabilities, PP40 to include the two questions and a place for the doctor to sign as discussed at the December 16, 2019 workshop and a clarifying statement regarding repeated information and the word annual in the heading. We need a second. I second. Yeah. Any further discussion? I found in item number three on the page one, it says in conjunction with each annual review. So there is that reference to annual. I only got it in two places. Mm -hmm. and hopefully they'll be able to read it. Yeah, we, we made it more obvious to come up yes. in the heading. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. That completes old business, new business. So now we have two more. We have the PP 37, 37A. That's under new business. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Okay, um, PP37, I, uh, I make a motion to approve the changes to PP37 presented at the January 6, 2020 <coughs> workshop. I'll have a second. Second. Eight seconds. So what's your change? Go ahead and explain. This, this was the changes we talked about where people will uh, designate when they want doors unlocked so that we not propping open doors and the fog system controls access. The, the, the other thing that's changing, and that's the third circle down on the page, is I've removed that box where they are supposed to check mark that they've read the form, and I've changed it to say by submitting this form. That makes it easier for me to accept the email forms that I might get and whatnot. So if they, as soon as they put their name on it, they're saying, I've read the, I've read the directions. I know the rules. Or with the second uh, box there under kitchen, by the fact that it's listed under the kitchen uh, section, it suggests to me that it only applies somehow something related to the kitchen. You want a black line underneath the underneath the kitchen section? And first, the intent is that it applies to all doors, I, as I understood our previous discussion. Correct. <laughs> and it doesn't address whether it applies to the inside doors as well as the outside doors. Like the large hall, the inside door is going out to the restrooms. There's no fog no on those, so it's not applicable. But the question about whether they can be propped open or not. Okay. I think it's self-explanatory. The aiming at the doors where the fobs are, we're asking if they want to disable so they don't have to prop open those doors. The Doors going from the large hall into the uh, vestibule, that's what you describe it, mm -hmm. uh, could be propped open. Uh, but they still shouldn't be because they, they open. Right. Well, either they can be or they can't be. They're not supposed well, to be. We're not supposed to prop doors open, period. That's a real easy statement. <laughs> Don't prop the doors open. The, pro the propping and opening of doors is basically for fire when there's a fire emergency. We would prop the door open so could exit the building easier. Uh, otherwise, people are supposed to open the doors um, with, the fob, with the fob, and then you know, the inside doors are not supposed to be cropped. Uh, Was there a reason why we didn't have this discussion at the workshop? Well, yeah. I wasn't here, so I don't know, but it just seems 
like we're coming late to the party. We, we should have beat this document up at the workshop, and now we're beating it up when we're supposed to have already beat it up. So well, I'm confused. I thought we pretty well beat it up. Uh, it, it was generating where uh, whoever put it, submitted the reservation was not being transmitted to <coughs> forward to TJ to make sure that those doors were unlocked at, at the specific times, which then people were going ahead and opening up the outer doors, which was taking care of all the AC and everything. The inner doors to the uh, north side of the park there, that's still inside the air conditioning. I don't agree with propping them open, but if it is propped open, they still have to use their pop to get in and still air conditioned out there with the toilet. It's not, no, that's not air conditioned out there, is it? So, yeah. Oh, it's awful hot in there. Oh, okay. When you go through there sometimes. But, 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 but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. But there was a situation that came up subsequent to the uh, prior workshop discussion on this about the inside doors where a uh, statement was made that they could not be propped open. And I don't think anyone realized or thought about those inside doors, whether this applied to it or not, when we had our previous discussion. And I don't see... Why, why do you need to prop those doors open? They're not they are not popped. You can walk up and pull it. Because of the difficulty of opening for some people with disabilities. They have a power button. You push the button. Mm -hmm. On the inside door? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, there should be it's no reason to prop it. There access. should be no reason to prop it. And I'd like to see that the policy is clear that it applies to those doors or not, because there's, we have many inside doors. I'm going to rule you out of order. I don't think it's got any relevancy to this discussion. Uh, I think we should go ahead and approve this. If it becomes an issue, we can always come back and revisit it. Uh, it's the understanding of the, of the trust, the majority of the trustees on the board, that it applies to the outside door where you have the fob. The inside doors were never supposed to be propped open. Again, the prop thing is put there for purposes of fire exit uh, emergencies, or like the emergency we had on set on Sunday at the dance, where it was necessary to prop the doors open in order to get a person out of the building in, in a manner conducive and made it easier for the fire fire rescue yeah. emergency to be able to do it. With that, any other discussion? Yeah, rules can't uh, overrule common sense. Sometimes you got to use common sense in these situations too. You can't rule, put rules on everything. So, um, are we adding the a line separating kitchen from? Are you inviting the general public? No. No. no? Okay. So it's good as is? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. W Gordon, was your aye? It's a negative. Yeah, negative. Negative? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next one. Right. Yes, approve the changes to PP37A presented at the January 6, 2020 workshop. And that is just simply adding that statement that's there's no other changes to that. Discussion. Second. Second, I'm sorry, thank you. Any other discussion? You need a second. I, oh, I can't second. suck at my own work. <laughs> Sandy, Sandy, Sandy thank, you. <laughs> thank you. It's all right. No problem. It's discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. That completes new business. Report from clubs and organizations. Any clubs or organizations that wish to come forward? Um, I, I do. Um, give me just a second. Um, I'm going to be taking over for Gail for the Christmas dinner. Um, committee. Uh, we, had our, we had our first. We had our first first meeting. We'll have another pre-planning meeting in March. I'll make sure that I get it advertised. Um, would love for as many people to attend as possible. Um, always looking for volunteers. 
Uh, it's going to be uh, Gail and Joan have both stepped back from their leadership roles, and so it'll be new leadership, and we're going to do some things better, we're going to do some things worse, we're just going to do the best we can, and we want to get as many people involved in that as possible. So um, I'll advertise it on Channel 732, give everybody as much warning in that, at that March meeting, and we'd love to see lots and lots of faces there. Um, and stuff and, and really happy that we're able to continue that Christmas dinner um, every year. Any other clubs or organizations? Would you remain in the Yep. Please. Karen Harker, 6907 West Bayou Lane. Um, the video, I'm sorry. The Computer Club of Trailer Estates will be doing a presentation and training at our following our next meeting, February 7th, in the Pelican Room. The subject of the next training will be how to make your TV smart, how to make your TV smart, and how to use the Spectrum TV app. That's it. <laughs> Steve, it's 1814 Minnesota Avenue. I did all the, uh, this is about bingo, okay? Um, I just added up everything for 2019, and we donated $3,981.09, no, 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 cents. I'm going to go, <laughs> to uh, Mothers Helping Mothers. It's continuing on very well. That means we brought close to $40,000 out to give the out to prizes. So Bingo is doing flourishing, and mothers and helping mothers are very happy. Thank you. Any other clubs or organizations? Seeing none, I have a motion to adjourn. I have a motion. Motion to second. I'll second. Or a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Dumpster. Any other items? Any other items? Moving along. The first one, uh, Lori. Um, all right. Uh, the first one, uh, I need to recommend that we change PP50 to PP9A. And the problem is when we were redoing these, that didn't get picked up as a uh, duty, and, and it's really a kitchen manager duty, and so it needs to go up with the duties like the dock master and stuff like that. So we just need to fix that to PP9A. Any discussion? We'll bring it forward to the next uh, board, board meeting. All right. Next one is... The next, the next one is uh, to change PP50A to PP50. Since we eliminated PP50, we just need to move that up and, and make it be PP50 without the A on the end. 
Um, it's easy enough to clean up now, and it'll be less confusing later. Any objections? Moving along, we'll move that to the next board meeting. Um, all right. Number, our, I'm proposing that we create a PP9B, again, duties, and have a community channel manager duties. Just like we have a kitchen manager duties and we have the dock master duties, have the community channel manager duties and enumerate them here. Um, and, and when I was doing the example, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the, the timing routine of, of the rebroadcast. Um, so I was just using that as an example that annually that needs to be presented to the chair. I've got a few corrections in the top. You should say community channel manager. You need to add a G there. In the first sentence, behind the word board chairman or designee. And in the second one, remove the period, put or designee, then put the period. Okay. Any further discussion? Or is, is this intended to be a volunteer position first? Yes. That's in that. And um, how does this fit into the other operation of the, the, the community channel? You don't need to elaborate. I don't follow well, the question. Well, this says um, Ensure requested data is provided on the community channel. So is this the person that's intended to be the one that actually puts it on there? Yes. Or is it in charge of the volunteers who does? Yeah. They're ultimately responsible for it. Okay, so this would be a, a board or chairman appointment. Who? Yes. The general authority is for the chair to appoint these yes. types of uh, positions. Does that require any approval by the rest of the board? Or is it just the well, chairman's choice? The board, the chair has afforded the board the ability to do so. However, the, board, the chair has been told that he does not have to. Okay. So it would be a chair appointment, basically. Correct. One of the reasons you ask why are we doing this, the simplest one is 732 is a government channel. It's not a park channel. It's not a recreational channel. It's the parks channel of the government. And as such, the government has a responsibility to make sure its information that it's putting out there is in accordance with the policies of the board. And that's why we're doing this. It's just that simple. Any further discussion about the child manager's duties? Move that for the next board meeting. Wait, hang on just a second for me. Um, with that, with, with that in mind, do I have, do I have a spot? Sorry, did I talk about PP14A? Yes. That's later. Okay. That's later on. Sorry. We're, we're All right. Yep. Next one is creating. Or updating the organizational chart. And that's just a matter of, of record uh, adding the kitchen manager that was never on the organizational chart and then the community channel manager. Any discussion? We'll move, forward, we'll move that forward to the next board meeting. Next one's Mary's. Next one's me, yes. At a couple of board meetings ago, we talked about some changes that. Uh, would make sense to our phone expense. Um, right now we're currently paying for a phone line in, two phone lines in the um, shuffleboard court, one in the wood shop, um, and we do not have a phone in the kitchen. So um, I looked into the what would it would cost to change those phones to 911 emergency phone lines only. Um, so that they're not made for people to make personal phone calls or, or you know, 
order out some lunch or anything. They're only would be available um, if there was an emergency that required 911. And I work with Big Fish on converting, because they've converted all of our phone systems except for these, over to uh, emergency only phone lines. Now, there's a lot of numbers on this page. The long and short of it is if we move the shuffleboard, the workshop, the phone at the pool to 911 only emergency phones, and we install a phone near the kitchen here so that if there is an emergency in the kitchen, they don't have to run for their cell phone, they can just use that phone to call 911. It would take us about a year and a half to recover the cost for that, so there would be an initial expense now, the savings from the monthly phone charges. So the bottom line benefit would take about a year and a half, and then from that point forward, the park would save money on phone expense and we would still, you know, we're not required to provide a phone line for all outgoing calls, but we definitely should be providing a phone line for an emergency, especially in a place like the wood shop or the kitchen. I mean, well, that's huge. When we, do the ki when we do the kitchen, can we put it just outside the kitchen? Um, one, if there's a fire in the kitchen, you don't want anybody in the kitchen trying to make a phone call. Um, and two, in case there's an event at the dance or whatever, there's a phone that they can call. Definitely, if we decide to move forward, we'll make sure we place them in a strategic place that we don't have that there. I was surprised. I, I guess I hadn't taken the time to look um, and realized, by gosh, I mean, that accidents happen in kitchens. I can't believe that there's no phone anywhere near that kitchen. So this that was a big one. If we don't do the others, I would at least like to get a phone put outside that kitchen. I just think that's a that's an important place to have one. In the pool, you can actually dial up the you can, yeah, but I'm going to change it to being a night. You shouldn't mm -hmm. need to make a personal phone call from the pool to have your cell phone for that. But if someone's having a medical emergency, you should be able to pick up the phone with down 911. Do I understand, do I understand that these are uh, phone over internet, so there's no... They will be. There's no ongoing monthly cost. It's just Correct. the upfront. Correct. Once costs. we have this initial expense, there's no monthly cost from that point forward. And so that's when we'll say. Previously, there was, uh, as I understood it, there was some, the phone in the TV room and the one in the pool were the same phone or the same line or something. Yes. Does, what does this do, if anything, to the phone in the TV room? It would uh, eliminate that phone, actually. The TV room, the, TV, the channels. Needs to be able to make outside they, phone calls. They need to make outside phone calls. They need to be able to call spectrum for service if there's problems. They need to be able to call the board, call board members, the chairman if there's questions and issues. So that that phone, that phone, they catch that cord. Um, that phone in the, the um, channel seven hundred two room really needs to stay. Full functioning phone. It can be voice over internet. That's yep. not a problem. Yep. But it needs to stay a So we'll make a phone line that's there, a dedicated phone, and then we'll install a 911 only emergency phone outside by the spot. Yeah. Okay. So the cost, the additional cost, in this would be in this year's budget. If we make the decision to go ahead, yeah, we would fund it right now. So is that able to be done? Yep. Yeah. So they'll have, they'll with, the, with the, you also bring information about you know, the with the same Exactly. Okay. exactly. With that, so you move forward. I will move it forward with, and I'll make sure I clarify that. Okay. And the next three or four. Uh, actually four, were all ones that I brought forward at the last board meeting on Lori's behalf. Okay. And then they, they just, it was decided they needed so, to be workshopped again, so. So can I take them over? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, let's see, PP 14A, uh, I need to pass out yeah. Yeah. Um, a new version of 14A. There's that going that way, that going that way, I don't know if I have to make them up. Teacher already had one in the office. And I heard what was said about the question with PP14A, and it made perfect sense. So I'm recommending now that we've workshopped and said we're going to create a 
Channel 732 manager that we replace the verbiage of video club to be community channel manager in those two places that it showed up in PP14A. So I'm recommending that we make that change and then move this forward at the next board meeting. Discussion. Gordon? The, um, just check my notes here. The policy three weeks. <coughs> We've had discussions in the past about commercial purposes, and this this allows clubs that are organizing events to put to continue to put their ads on there to sell tickets. Well, it's not, not, they're, they're not putting on an ad; they're advertising an event that the club is participating in and sponsoring. That is not a commercial endeavor, uh, as determined, you know, by what they're advertising. Right, so we're words, In other words, if the computer club wants to throw a party in Venezuela and they were saying it's going to cost you $3,000, do we advertise it as the computer club is having a trip to Venezuela for $3,000 a person, you know, please contact the following person. That's not a commercial advertising, it's a club activity. So, like the yacht club. The yacht club, the same way. They're going to have, you know, Anna Marie Oyster Bar on Thursday night, Prime Rip, and they're going to go there. They could advertise that. Or a Panama Canal. Or Panama. <laughs> Panama. Same thing. Yes. To answer your basic question, yes. Any other questions, concerns? So I can move this forward. We move that forward. I'm going to interject. I should have said something earlier. Though we did 14A, there's also a 14B that needs to be added, which pass out, which is the form that's current that's used to submit to the community channel current event request form. Um, we've added community channel to it. We're making it a PP14B, and we're creating this policy. Um, it was mentioned by uh, a resident. That why don't we allow them to email the form? Would this be able to be downloaded as a, as a Word document that they can or fill in the form? I don't know. I can work on it, but it's, it's going to be probably three weeks or a month before I have a, an opportunity to look at this as a full form. We still get an and it's only because um, we still have an the so I think um, software isn't nice and white with the squares and the letters, and so I have to see how I can restrict one letter per square, and, and so that's going to take some brain power. Um, and, and I, with the reservations that's going to be coming in, I'm going to be swamped. So for right now, they could print it at home, they could fill it in, they could scan it and email it back to you, and that would work. But as far as a fillable form, it, it can't. It won't be that for at least a month. But I can work on that. Put it on your list to do. It is. <laughs> um, with that, we'll move forward. With any discussion? The other part of the question was to uh, allow clubs and organizations to prepare it already in a uh, slide form for addition. Do we want to consider allowing that? Let me think about that. When she brings back the other one, we'll discuss it then. I don't see a reason why it couldn't be, but I would rather think about that first. Right. Yeah, we need, we need to cogitate on it, but maybe we could say see attached slide. They email you the slide. You could still print it for public record. The slide wouldn't be necessarily in color and all pretty for public record, but then you could forward that. Yep. So that, that might be a possibility. The, the reason, again, because we're going to a <coughs> governmental channel, we have to keep public records. So everything that's submitted has to be kept in a format that can be used. Uh, I'm not against the idea. But I think we got to work up the logistics of it. With that, we'll move that forward. <coughs> Next one, duties of the chair. Hang on just a second, I gotta catch up my notes. All right, um, duties of the chair. 
Um, that was just held up because of the that we hadn't figured out what we were going to do with the community channel, and we have now. So I still think that we need to add number eleven, oversee all aspects of the district's community channel, and that's the only thing that's changing there. Any objection? Move that forward next meeting. Okay. Application for emotional support animals. No, no, we need a committee charge. Media committee Media charge. Committee. I'm sorry. P -P 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 11. PP11. And that was that was uh, just verbiage that was necessary to have some remedy should the chair oh, decline a decline a slide or decline an announcement um, that gives them some form of remedy for it. So we just added the verbiage. It, it all stayed the same. There wasn't anything that needed to be changed. It just had to hold until we did this. This all happens all in one big ball, but they're each individual documents. So, okay. Um, can I move on? Yeah. I have a question. On yes. This. Okay. Um, my understanding is this committee would be subject to the Sunshine Law. Yes, it much is. Much like the unification. Should we have a statement on this document that says that? No, they're, the committees know what they're saying. Well, they're, they're a committee established. We could add to, we could add well, to that top, top sentence and then subject to sunshine law. Yeah, I don't think that works. And what well, you're, the chairperson is establishing the committee, and that is, once he establishes, she uh, establishes that committee, it automatically goes right back to the deep, not the deep restrictions, like bylaws and stuff that automatically says that it falls under the sunshine law. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just duplicating what's already in our books. And the description in, in item number one says special standing committee, and our bylaws only have standing committees, so I'm wondering if the word special should be stricken from this document. From what? Number one. Number, number one. one. I'm sorry, I missed Number it. Oh, one, special. special. Yeah, okay. strike the word special to put the outstanding committee. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think that's consistent with our bylaws. Any other further? We'll move that forward. Now we get All right, P the PP40 is unnecessary because we voted on it okay. uh, at the board meeting. All right. Okay. Next one is yours, Mary. Oh, okay. I would like to uh, recommend the following budget timeline for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. Um, I have for each of those who need to submit me a, um, a budget, an exhibit that provides for you what was spent. The book, both of those are Dwayne's and those are in public record. And those are both Dwayne's? Yes. yes. Okay, because yeah. you're passing out to, yeah. to me. Right, right. Okay. so the, the following people, Sandy, Pete, and Dwayne, um, have uh, budgets they need to submit to me about what you think your spending needs to be for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. What you have there is what you actually spent in the 2019-2020 year, what you spent in first quarter of this current fiscal year, and what you have for a remaining budget. And then you need to provide for me what you're going to need for that next fiscal year. So you have some run rates to work with. Um, Duane, you've got uh, both the maintenance budget and the capital improvement budget. Mm -hmm. So what that's going to do, is that's got a couple of years of capital improvements on it. That's like a document that lives on. And because there's always capital improvement projects that we want to do in a, a particular fiscal year, but for one reason or another, we don't get them done and they carry forward. So, um, and then we have savings, and so that, that kind of is where we are as of this fiscal year that we're in right now. So you can see what you think you can get done this year, what might need to go over to the 2020, 2021 year, and then anything you want to add. Um, if, we, if you guys could get that back to me um, by the 24th, 
And if you need a couple more days, I'm not going to, that's fine. What I plan to do is presenting a first draft of the budget at the February 3rd meeting for the first round of discussions about where we're, where we're landing. I'm sorry, I just realized that there's a 20th and you want four days. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Well, I'm hoping those run rates are going to help you. Um, if you if you need a couple more days, like I said, I've got the exhibits ready. It's just going to be keying in your numbers. Uh, the reason why I, I'm kind of rushing this through, and I don't mean to rush it through, is I, I want to do things a little differently this year. So I want the first draft to be presented on February 3rd. And then the second draft on February 17th. And I want to have a public hearing on March 2nd to present the budget and then I want an opportunity at the workshop to talk about concerns that were brought forward and have another opportunity to make any changes so I'm kind of adding one more opportunity than we've had in the past for people to come forward at these meetings and say I don't understand why we need to spend that money on this or whatever uh, before we bless it on March 16th. Is everybody okay with that timetable? And I know the 24th, I'm hoping, you know, anything I can do to help you guys with run rates or what things it typically costs, I'm happy to do that. Um, any addition? Any, any comment? Move that forward then. Okay. <clears throat> The proposal I've given you is things that we should be doing or thinking about when we change state law to affect our needs here in the park. The blurring one is the incorporation of the ARC committee into the statute. Based on the court decision, uh, the ARC committee is not in the statute. Uh, it has its own independence, but it sometimes causes us problems. Like we can appoint somebody but we can't remove somebody. Okay, and they can stay on there for a lifetime. There is no deadline of when that person has to come off. It's basically a voluntary system. You know, they leave when they want. Uh, so one of it would be make it a you know, committee, make it an appointment by the chair to one year terms, up to three times. Establish a chair of the art committee, so they have some kind of structure. Establish rules by the art members subject to the approval of the board. Uh, requiring them to hold, I put down monthly means, they put down quarterly means, I mean they put down you know, semi-annual means, but they should be open to the public. Uh, report to the board on an annual basis. Uh, they, what actions they took the previous year, so we have some idea what's going on in the park. And the last one, probably the most important part of it. Currently, if they get sued, they're not covered by us. I don't know how many people would be willing to take that kind of risk of sticking their neck out uh, if they would be sued. So that, the last part is basically that they would have the same protection that you and I have as board members. And I think that's important. Again, these are legislative changes based on the last conversation we had on this. I didn't give you copies. I'm sorry. That's why you have them. Good question. Yeah, Sandy, I apologize. Sandy, Sandy Stevens does uh, beautification. Correct. Is she, uh, is she covered? Um, you know, if, if somebody sued the beautification committee, is she covered? Or do we need to, to include that in our... In our fixes. That's a good question. I'd have to check with the attorney. I would assume because it is a committee of the board that she would be, but I'm not absolutely sure. So that is a question I need to ask. Um, TJ Hanson knows that was just yeah. yeah. out there. Uh, I will contact um, our attorney and ask him that question or email him that question. I tend to think she would be because it's a committee of the board. Right, but well, while well, we're yeah. fixing stuff, I want right. to make sure we fix it all. Yes, probably should go to the insurance company also. Uh, I understand that if she considered a volunteer of the park, she probably would be covered. So it should confirm that with the insurance company. Well, isn't, isn't yeah. Art now um, a volunteer of the, no. of the resident? No. Okay. 
that's why that's why I'm proposing all gotcha. the, okay. the legal change gotcha. that we should look at, if nothing else. Gotcha. This one's probably the most important one. I mean, the other ones are nice. Uh, and then the last one I propose is the park be given the authority to conduct bingo and 50-50 raffles in accordance with Florida statutes and regulations. When they de designed the law for the raffles and the bingos, they left out special park districts. Right. And we need to, if we're going right. to change the laws after 20 years, that's probably one of those ones that, you know, it seems so minor, but it would make so much sense. And the reason that I found the, the logic, the legislature said, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 100 or more special taxing districts. And they're all different kinds of taxing districts. You've got community activities that are special taxing districts. You have us. They're, they're all over the place. So they didn't just want to give a blanket okay to have bingles and raffles. So this would correct that problem also. This list is not limited. But again, I want to remind you that we should start thinking about what you want to add. Right. You know, to change the laws. Yes, for On the ARC uh, discussion, uh, maybe it would come under one of the others, but uh, under establishing rules, but I think it would be valuable to have the ARC notify the public relations trustees of permits that they approve, or projects that they approve, on an ongoing mm -hmm. basis. Yes. Well, that's, yes. that's where it says established rules by ARC members subject to the approval of the board. Right. That's where you would have your input yeah, to say, exactly. we want you to add this one, we want you to add this one, we want you to take that one out, because that's the only time we're going to get that opportunity. But currently, you're right, we, that is one of those that we should be putting in there that we can't, because uh, they're not covered by a state statute. They're part of the charter of deeds. That's the intent. So are you, are you looking at, are you looking for us to start Listing the things we want to see added. Yeah, and the thing, okay. you know, and if you got you know concerns about certain ones, let's discuss them. Let's talk about them. Uh, these are just ideas. Right. None of these are in cement. None of these are, you know. Okay. This is my wish list. You may have a whole different wish list. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna add to them. Okay. Uh, section 13 uh, of the statute. Says the property of the district shall consist of the recreational hall, shuffle courts, marina, playground walks, and other property. Should we enumerate Beach 10, uh, Post Office Laundry Activity Center, and Pool? Isn't that, further, that? isn't that further in there? No. Not in, not in section 13. It, it just says and other property, which that all falls under, under and other property. But while we're cleaning this up, let's clean it up. Post office. Oh, sorry, I put through that. Um, beach, ten, post office, laundry, activity center, and pool. Beach ten, I, that's in two A. That would include incorporate church property. Pardon? Yeah. Well, adding section two J to incorporate church property. Right. That that it, that incorporates the property. This is just in section thirteen where it's talking about the property of the district shall consist of. And it's listing out. Okay. What I happens if we want to delete something like the laundry or something? We we TV. So say we want to get rid of the TV station. The yeah, I guess I guess maybe maybe we need to be more. We need to be the things that are more permanent, like beach and town and pool. Yeah. Um, maybe the activity center because the activity center is always going to be an activity okay. center in my mind. But the pool, the PO post office box and post, laundry, yeah, that, that building might change, so maybe we don't want to include that in the enumeration. Okay. That will fall under the end of the property. Yeah, I think I think section 13 reference to uh, other property now or hereafter erected or uh, mm -hmm. purchased is sufficient to cover it unless there's a real need to be more specific. That's in our charter now. That we're yes. 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 Right. Again, yes. Again, I want you to get away from the idea of the charter. The charter is not a legal statute of law. The statute governs this park. The charter is a nice document, but for the most part, the court ruled 
in the tripartite situation, unless it's in the statute, it doesn't exist. And we're okay. we're referencing in our material as a charge. We should change that also. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's that you gotta have one or what one or the other document governing you. And as long as the court's telling us you gotta look at state statute, we gotta clean up that statute. I mean, it's almost twenty years old and it hasn't been touched in that length of time. It's time that we make a push to try to get it changed. I'm not guaranteeing the legislators are gonna take it. Well that's another concern ultimately when we have a list of what things might be politically deal breakers that we can live without might be a consideration before we ultimately move Agreed. forward. Agreed, but I've learned one thing. If you throw enough against the wall, some of it, some will stick. That's right. And um, my objective is to stick so much stuff in it that we can get as much as we can within reason. But some things are much more critical. Yes, we'll have them to prioritize them. Right. And then the other thing is they have to be concepts. They can't be language. That was the other thing I learned from legislators. They have to be a, a concept of what you're planning to do. Because then they're going to come back and they're going to ask you, for example, what's it going to cost residents of the park, or what's it going to cost the park in changing these regulations? Uh, so, one question I had sure. on, on item number six, maybe Mary can answer it. As far as, or maybe you already know the the deadline that the county has. When do we have to have information to them to put it on the tax bill? We have to ratify our budget before March 31st every year. But that's our current rule. Right. If we change this, item six is uh, talking about changing the budget deadline. It, so the budget, the, yeah. The county's going to have a deadline when they have to have the information to put it on the tax roll. So we want to make sure if we're proposing some change in that date that we don't go beyond the county's deadline. Well, we're not proposing a change in the date. We're just proposing that the date be what's real versus what's... I mean, the, the, this is old language. We already changed our fiscal year to October 1st. Yeah, no, that's not, that's, that's not what I'm okay, I'm talking about. Apologize. The part about uh, the second sentence or last sentence in there, of a deadline for approving the budget from April to August. Oh. See, I, and, and we wouldn't want that date, I wouldn't think, to be after the deadline for the county to receive information. I agree. That. So I don't I know what that date is either. All right. Any other? As you have ideas or changes you want to make, uh, you, can, you can submit them to me. I, you can't discuss them to the board meeting, but I keep on putting them on, on a sheet and keep on adding them to the list. And, you know, if you see things you think we shouldn't do, deal with, you know, uh, we can talk about them too. I mean, uh, Wayne Brook. Dwayne brought up the idea about the TV, and that was one that, you know, I looked at it and said, well, you don't have it that anymore, you know. And you brought up about uh, corporate, you know, I, I put in there, incorporate the rules and regulations and charters of the state law, to actually make it part of the document. We need to change our website and so forth, too, from the refers charter. Pardon? Under a website, yeah. it refers to charter. We're going to keep that. So we need to be consistent with right. our thinking. Yeah. Correct. We got to first get to the point where we got the state looking at this the same way we're looking at it. I'm not against the idea. It's, you know, a PP15 workshop worksheet. Yeah, from the I think it was the last meeting um, we had discussed the uh, change to PP15 on developing just the work. You get copy to TJ? Yeah, it's all stamped in. Yeah. I mean, she knows you're passing it out in this meeting? Yes. Perfect. Okay, sorry. Did I only Try make two copies? <clears throat> well, they're already failed. No, they're anyway, the only thing that's changing in that PP15 is just changing the, uh, I didn't save a copy for myself, just changing the, uh, just adding a new page. the disposal of the personal property, they have property worksheet. So, the whole document then becomes the turning the piece of equipment, it, it identifies the inventory tag, the uh, purchase date, purchase amount, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that's going to be signed then by the maintenance trustee or the maintenance foreman. 
It also identifies the PP15 requirements of what we discussed. If it's under $1,500, it's just an automatic. If it's over 15, then it goes into the bid. The PP15 itself actually identifies how to submit <coughs> the item for bid and receive it under sealed bids at the next board meeting, etc. So the only thing that really changed in there is just the form itself for submitting your piece of equipment. There's your copy. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I have one question. Under number one, is the local disposition authorization new? Is it underlined? No. No. Okay. That was one question I had. No, that, that's all that's all old verbiage. The only thing that's new is the third page. Third page okay. Yep. You'll take move that to the next meeting? Yes, I will. Okay. Um, Horseshoe Club Finance Club Funding. Yep. Um, we received this request from the Horseshoe Club to help with some renovation costs. Um, are we going to support this expenditure and where would it fall? I think we need to support it because we support all the I, other I 100 clubs, agree. you know, the groups and stuff. Um, where it falls, not that, that, that you, not me. Well, Wayne had mentioned that he thought give, give you the money, baby. That, that, uh, <laughs> the maintenance budget could absorb it when the, and still stay within their Yeah, budget. if I can. Uh, I guess with pre-approval of the board, let me go back and take a look at this to see if I do have money for the rest of the fiscal year, and then I can go ahead and just make the change and do it for them. Okay. You report back to us next meeting? Yeah. But we don't have to approve it or vote on it or anything because that's far below your maximum. Yeah, you know, we'll be on my, my dollar and I'll just right. notify you that yeah, right. you have the money to do it. And gotcha. You perfect. Done. Perfect, perfect. Saturday night dances. Yes. Pass this out, please. Does TJ have a copy and know that it's being passed out in the workshop? No. No? I, I, I'm going to have to take two copies. You may. Thank you. Okay. I would like to add to our Saturday night dances by incorporating the beautification committee and the fire department fundraisers into our Saturday nights, thus eliminating the dances on Thursday and Friday. When these dances are on these days, someone loses funds. Uh, so we need, we need funds for both beautification to keep our park lovely and fire department so that our taxes don't go sky high, we don't have a fire department. Um, we still will have for four Saturday night dances, but with different genres. We will try to uh, please the majority. I have an example there of how we're going to do that. If we do like three of our regular Saturday nights and put one in another one, then we save that money that we Get from a, that we have to pay out for a van. And therefore, we can then roll that over to the next month. And if we have three the next month, then we'll also save that fourth one again. And that will give us more money that we can have for trying to find a, a better van for those uh, nights. And so that you're looking at you're looking at December of twenty and then January of twenty twenty one. This is not in, written in stone. Right. I, this I is just it. something we. But that's an example. example. That's what these dates represent here. The fifth. Yes. Is December fifth, twenty twenty, and January 9th, twenty twenty one. The only one I, I see a major problem with is the February sixth one, because it limits the number of people from the park that can attend it. 
How is it specifically designed for Michigan and Canada? It's open to the and we wondered about that one. It's not open to the public. If the first priority is the Michigan residents and Canadian residents. If they if they fill it up, it prevents anybody else from attending. Oh. There's the problem I have with that one. Okay. And that's really the only one I have a problem with from my perspective of looking at it as part function. Uh, the other ones I'd have no problem with. The only recommendation I would be is they eliminate table assignments. You get a ticket, you buy the ticket, you have the ability to attend the, the, the function. Mm -hmm. uh, by numbering them, you basically dictate where a person has to sit. And that can be causing a whole mess of problems. Uh, understanding that you're going to limit the number of people from the outside, they're going to be able to attend. That, correct me if I'm wrong, the last dance, we cleared $637 at the door. That more than covered our cost. Mm -hmm. Just understand, you, you know, from the park's perspective, I don't think it's a problem. I think from people outside the park, it may be an issue. Because a lot of them like to attend our dances, but we're not here to service them. Um, I think you need to kind of ask around, or people, Everybody on the board should kind of ask around if we did this, uh, would you find that to be a, a problem? Uh, um, because we've been offering free dances, now we're, we're charging to the Saturday night dances. Is that going to happen? We can get a lot of blowback on it. That's something you should be aware of, <coughs> something you should talk to people about, because they could get blowback saying, wait a minute, you had all these free dances, now you're charging us for these dances. Not saying I'm against it, I'm just saying that those are concerns you should look at and discuss with you. Especially when you have the activity fair, having a discussion with people as they come up, talking to them about it, and um, explain it. You know. Well, just the comments that I've received from talking to different people is they're not against charging $10 if we can get a better band because passing the gel on three of a kind, two of one sick. You know, it have been here for years. They would like to see a different change. So I had a positive return on that. Uh, in fact, the last dance that we had for the fire department, that band that was here, I, I heard raving reviews about that. So I don't have a problem charging ten dollars. I don't think a lot of people out there are going to like that. But is that per couple or is that per person? Per person. Per person. Per person. I'd like to clarify the, the suggestion, uh, Sandy, that certain ones like the uh, Beautification Committee, I think it's got two on here, the Hoedown, the Fire Department, those would be organized by someone else other than under the Seasonal Recreation Trustee umbrella, is that? Right. Right. Wait. So it kind of comes down to like two a month because what I'm seeing is the uh, January 23rd would be the committee beautification, the question about the Canada Michigan dinner, and then the <coughs> down would be pri uh, separate, the fire department, and then again March 20th beautification. Those, uh, those five items would be outside of the uh, seasonal recreation. Right. So those would be likely everybody would pay a fee to participate in those. Right. Right. Again, they don't have to participate. Right. Right. But just, just trying to right. be sure I understand about the... So basically, instead of a free Saturday night dance, every Saturday, it's every other Saturday would be free, and every other Saturday would be a function that would require a pre-purchase of a ticket. That doesn't necessarily hold true because January there's repeated. So there, there's going to be there's going to be confusion that, that we can deal with. But there's going to be confusion with I showed up at the dance last Saturday and I just showed my ID and I walked in. This Saturday I show up I show my ID and they tell me I have to you know, ten dollars or I have to have bought a ticket. So we've got to make sure that we make it very obvious and. <coughs> we educate everybody how that would work. I think it's a grand idea. I do. I think it's wonderful. Um, I do have to agree 
that with Mike on the Michigan Canada dinner, I'm not sure that putting that on a Saturday is the appropriate thing to do because that. they're not just a dance, they're a dinner dance and like Mike said, the first first day's ticket sales are open only to Michigan and Canada residents and if they sell out, they sell out and then nobody else can go. And so he's right, it's limited and I'm not sure that's a good venue to keep stay that, there. Keep that on Monday. Um, you know, I'm sure you could find somebody to jump in that spot, like maybe right. a fire department or something. But, mm -hmm. um, but I, I I agree. I don't think that that dinner, because the dinner is also not going to be a ten dollar event. And I, I can tell you that right now, the Michigan Canada dinner is not a ten dollar event, and they're not going to be able to make it a ten dollar event, nor do they want to. So I'm thinking that they just don't fit in that pigeonhole of, of this list. You know, they don't. They don't belong there because it's not open to everybody in the park. Exactly. Um, not because they're going to need to charge more than ten dollars. Because these other beautification and fire department dances are not necessarily going to be ten dollars. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Depends on who we get. Right. What we have. How much it costs for the ten dollars? You know, for the how much day. we have to charge right. in order to turn profit. Right. Okay. Do, we, oh, go ahead. Do we need to have a dance every Saturday? Or can we go every other Saturday <coughs> to save money for the bands? Blah, blah, blah. I vote on that. That's, well, <laughs> that's February, right. so February, March. That's the problem. The board's going to be up with every other. It looks like they're filled from like 116, right. 23, 30. If you want to attend, you can. No, I mean, do we actually have to physically put on a band every Saturday night? Or can you so go you're, every you're other Saturday? You're suggesting seasonal recreation dances only be every other Saturday, leaving off Saturdays available for any other fundraiser sure. that we want to have in the park. Yeah. So maybe maybe say maybe say something along the lines and it make it up, but the second and fourth Saturday is is part is seasonal rec. Yeah. It's well, free to residents. The other dances require pre purchase tickets or possibly possibly a ticket at the door if they're not sold out. Um, yeah that that would work in my world, um, and then and then let them fill in around that. What have you already booked all your bands for 2021? The contracts have been sent out. They've been sent out. So 2021 is pretty much locked in with the what we're doing right now. We're actually looking forward to 2022. I in doing this. Think I can call them, mm -hmm. and it's not in stone. Okay. I think I can call them and tell them there's been a change of plans. All right, so you're going to need an answer for PDQ so that you can get those calls made. Yeah. So you're asking, can we rock with this format this year? And then in 2022, we would look at seasonal rec doing maybe the second and fourth Saturday of May. First and third, second, third, I don't care what the number is, but a, a set pattern for the residents to be able to follow. Does that sound good? Yeah. Any other questions? So April would still be filled with regular music, regular bands. April was, all, April was also part of your responsibility. Two. The first two. First two. Uh, right. Okay. okay. You'd also have to fill those in. Okay. Mm -hmm. In your budget preparation, you're going to make this recommendation. Yeah. Any questions? I, I think it's an excellent idea and it keeps from overlapping, having, having a dance on Thursday and then turn around having a dance on Saturday. Yeah. I, I think kudos. Great idea. Thank you. I'll have to change my phone. Dumpsters? Who has that one? Sandy. Dumpster? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still there. I'm still there. All right, no problem. I'm asking. Yeah. I have had a um, person from the park come to me and suggest that we put a container out by the dumpsters that says firehouse because they said that there are so many things going in those dumpsters that could go to the firehouse and make us a lot more money. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's a grand idea because my husband was at the dumpster um, just yesterday, oh, Saturday, sorry, Saturday, 
with uh, yard waste. And the yard waste was the only dumpster that was available. And I normally bag my weeds as garbage because I don't want to recycle weeds. But so he was tearing the bags open and dumping it in the in the yard waste. And somebody came along and they threw a a plastic trash bag in the yard waste. And my husband said, You can't put that in there. They said, Well, it's yard waste. He said, But the plastic can't go in there. And they just shrugged their shoulders at him and they left. And there's garbage that winds up in the recycling dumpsters. We're going to wind up with garbage in the firehouse dumpsters, and then we're going to be expecting the auxiliary to go over there and clean the dumpster out. If I agree. People do throw some things out that could be used by the firehouse, and that really breaks my heart. But we have a method that they can take it over to the fire station, put it on the table in the back, and it gets whisked away by the auxiliary. Um, and stuff. I just I don't see that as being a good idea. And I really don't want to absorb the cost of another dumpster to have the fire auxiliary come up and try to make a determination of what is good and what isn't good, and have to have that staff that's pushing 75 and 80 years old to try to throw that heavy i I'm sorry, heavy stuff into the dumpster. No. So I don't uh, I don't want to go along with that. I, I'd agree. I think it'll end up being a, one more place for garbage to end up. Then. I think you got to answer on that one. Yeah. <coughs> Residents, comments or questions? Comments about anything we discussed? Yeah. The workshop. Donnie Deerwester, 1804, Ohio. Um, one comment about the restriction of the three minutes. I understand that, but we're not allowed to speak after each item. So sometimes, you know, that doesn't quite work. Anyway, to fill in form, Lori, um, if you need help to do that, I have the software to do it. It's Adobe software. I do fill in forms all the time. I'm willing to help you do that. Um, I could um, get it sent to me by email. I could even PDF things. I can fill them in, I can send them back, um, can help do that. Um, I recommend that the 10 o'clock time deadline for submittal of the slide information be changed to the end of day on Tuesday. I understand that there needs to be timelines for things. I don't understand the 10 a.m. and if they could be uh, restricted or uh, changed to the end of day on Tuesday, then that gives people that day to get things in as well. On the art committee, I recommend discussion about having a rotating membership um, so that people, you have the continuity and history of people on the ARC and, you know, rotate the one, two, and three years. I realized that would be a challenge for the first rotations, but then it would settle into an ongoing rotation. And then you have that history and, and um, continuity there. 
And then I also recommend that these ideas for the uh, legislative changes be posted somewhere on the website up front, not have to go find it, so that people can look at them and, and think about them, provide comments, these are serious things that people would need to think about, and it gives them a chance to let them know that the board is working on this, whatever the topics are, and they can review it among themselves and provide input back to the board when that time comes. Thank you. <clears throat> Sandy Stevens, 1814 Minnesota Avenue, regarding the um, Saturday Night Dances. Um, does this go for a vote at the next meeting, the, what we talked about today? Talking about the dances? Yeah. yeah. No, that's going to be a legis that's going to be part of the her report, her comment to the budget to the treasurer on the changes she wants to make as it relates to her budget. So we're going to go forward with that. As far as uh, the reason why I'm asking is because we have two um, shows, dances, shows, and beautification in 2020 that if we go over, if you go over now, I can put on Saturday nights because we haven't sent any money in yet. So that's my, that was my concern. If you wanted, if I could. We're currently in 2020. You mean 2020. I mean 2020. I mean 2020. Okay, that's why I was a little bit confused. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Any questions? Aren't we looking at this for 20, December 2020 and then January, February, March of 2021? Yeah. Okay, so then because we're already we're already, you're already okay. That, 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 I'm just a little confused. So we'll go on and keep the dates that we have for 2020. Thank you very much. That was a very good idea. Any other? Okay. Before I drain, uh, let's look into software for PDF. Give you the opportunity. I have the software. Okay. I just have to have the time and the brain power. But I, I, we, we own that software. Okay. Same thing that, that Donnie recommended, the Adobe software. And, and I may I may well take a look at, if I can get that to her, I may have her go ahead and, and do that for me. Not a problem. But that's not going to happen in the next few days because this meeting is going to eat up the rest of my time for two, three days. Can I ask a question? Sure, go about the Saturday Night Dance proposal and the question that Sandy posed, I need some clarification on that because, for instance, the February 20th hoedown, that right now is not booked on February 20th because that's a Saturday. So if they're going to make that a Saturday thing, they're going to have to change mm -hmm. the, the contract that they have. And the same thing for the Rat Pack that's on here as March 20th. Mm -hmm. Right now, when you talk to them, you didn't book them for March 20th. You booked them for another date. So if you need to change your contract with them, we need to, you need to know that sooner rather than later. Right. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly this, what I'm saying. This is just an example, though. This is 2021. But they've already, they've already got Rat Pat coming. That's well, already... she just used that as an example of the Unification Committee when you have two different dances. One might be the Rat Pack. But in 2021, it might not be Rat Pack. Well, they've got Rat Pack that they're planning on bringing in in 2021. Yes, we do. But not for that date. For oh, well, date. I see. Not for that date. That's what and, I see what yeah. you're saying. Okay. And, and the, um, there's a couple of other ones here that they've already spoken to them about dates that were not Saturday night dates. Um, so if she, it's not, it might not be too late to change them. She's going to have to find out if they're available. I think I'm Come back with a what is it called here? PP38 next meeting with the line in the setup with the change in dates. We can approve the changes then for 2021. That'll resolve your concern and issue. That'll reserve your problem that you brought forward. Yeah. So bring it back as a PP38 next meeting. Because I was and make sure they're locked. Talk to these groups that yeah. want to do this, yeah. that they're on board with this idea. So you're going to have to talk to the beautification community. She's already here. 
You're going to talk to people that run the whole down. You're going to talk to the fire commissioners who are sitting on either side of me. Uh, we're so going to be having a February one, and now you're going to be down for March. Yeah. So. Okay. And that way we'll have it submitted, you know, confirmed that way. So it's going to come back in a workshop? No, it's going to come back as a, as a, as a motion. As a motion, because she did the workshop. She discussed it with us. You're going to bring it back as a motion for the board meeting. Okay. Any, anything else? Okay. I make a motion to adjourn.